I'm going to talk about Lab 68 and help you through uh, just a little bit. First of all, before you start Lab 62, be sure that you have watched the two Edpuzzle videos because uh, they're going to set up what we're going to get at in this lab. The first one is about three and a half minutes. It's a TED Ed. Uh, it's about how does the thyroid manage your metabolism. And it talks a little bit about what the thyroid is, where it's located, and how it functions. It talks specifically about how the pituitary controls turning on and turning off the thyroid and talks about when it's overactive or underactive. The second one, the crash course, talks about hormone cascades. Thyroxine, which is what it's going to be focused on in this lab 68, is produced as a result of a cascade, meaning one hormone is produced by one gland or area, which signals another one to be produced, which signals a third one to be produced, which then cycles back and then can stop or interrupt or inhibit the first one. So please watch these because they will help you to better understand what this lab is getting at and you'll be more successful. Let me remind you that everything in this lab, uh, the questions, the answers are all in the lab. All you need to do is read carefully uh, and be sure that you do a great job because it'll be graded for accuracy. So the introduction of this says a thyroid gland is one of the endocrine glands present in the human body. It produces a hormone called thyroxine. That's T4, as you watched in the videos. Thyroxine controls the metabolic rate of body cells. It helps manage our um, energy use. It helps manage the temperature of our body, as, as well as other things. The amount of thyroxine produced by your thyroid depends on and is controlled by the amounts of two other hormones present in the body. TRF is produced by an area of the brain called the hypothalamus. TSH is a hormone made by the pituitary gland. So these three chemicals, TRF, TSH, and thyroxine, interact in maintaining a suitable thyroxine level. All right, in this investigation, you're going to label drawings showing the location of body parts involved in thyroxine regulation and the hormones that are produced. In B, you're going to complete drawings showing the inhibitory, the prevention of, or the stimulatory, the encouragement of the production of thyroxine. We will not be doing part C, so you don't need to worry about that part of it. If you look at the first part of this, it says, look at figure one. Letter A shows the location of the hypothalamus, and I've labeled that for you. Uh, letter B shows the location of the pituitary gland, and again, that's uh, labeled for you as well. And label letter C shows the location of the thyroid, which is in our, our neck, right? Um, inferior uh, to the larynx and uh, anterior to the uh, larynx as well or the trachea. Uh, the hormones produced by these three glands interact in the following manner to maintain correct thyroxine level. TRF, which is produced from the hypothalamus, stimulates, encourages the pituitary gland to form and release TSH. TSH stimulates or encourages the thyroid to form and release thyroxine. Thyroxine, in turn, influences the production of TRF, so it cycles back to the hypothalamus, and when there's enough thyroxine being produced, then it signals to stop this cascade, which shuts off the thyroid. Uh, it asks you to draw arrows on figure one, then, so to indicate these three hormones. So I'm going to help you with figure one, and then as you read carefully through the rest of it, you'll be able to figure do figure two and figure three. So the arrow should point from the producing gland to the influence gland. So the first arrow that I drew here is from A, the hypothalamus, to B, the pituitary. So that red arrow shows that that is the producing going to the influencing gland. So draw that arrow and then label that with TS, uh, TRF. TRF is what's being labeled there. The next one points from B, the pituitary gland, down to C, the thyroid, Okay, so the pituitary gland is producing the TSH, and then the thyroid in response is going to be producing the thyroxine. This is the cascade, A to B, B to C. The last part of this is from C back to A. So the production of thyroxine is going to cycle back and influence the hypothalamus and suggest when it has enough of the thyroxine produced, which is going to shut off the cascade. So filling those out will be really helpful, those arrows. Uh, and it's not a bad idea to do those in colored pencil as well, but label those arrows because that's the next thing on your lab is to label the arrows with the type of hormone that's being produced. 
So the summary in here, again, the hypothalamus produces TRF. The presence of TRF signals the pituitary gland to produce TSH, the second hormone. The presence of TSH, produced by the pituitary, signals the thyroid to produce thyroxine. That then tells all the cells in your body what to do, whether to increase production, slow production, or maintain. And then lastly, when enough thyroxine is present, the hypothalamus stops producing the TRF because the production is inhibited, it's prevented. Come back to this if you need it along the way. All right, in figure two then, please read this page very carefully. In part B, this talks about the inhibiting of the effects of these hormones, slowing and stopping the effects, and stimulating or encouraging the production. So read carefully here. The one thing that it says within your reading, and I know you'll catch this as, you, as you're going on, um, and it talks about the pituitary gland is the on-off switch for the thyroid, but it says, use arrows of different widths to indicate the amounts of each hormone present. So on this screen, I put a skinny arrow. So use a skinny arrow when there's very little or no hormone being produced. Put a big fat arrow when there's a lot of it being produced. So use different widths of the arrows for both part B, figure two, and figure three. Figure five, as we get to this, and you're going to skip part C, but go to part D. Um, this talks about abnormal thyroid functioning. And in here, read about what happens to the thyroid when it doesn't um, function properly. Uh, and then a couple things can happen, and you're going to be asked to draw the correct thing. As it says here, the dotted line shows the normal size of the thyroid. So if the thyroid is larger because of the description of what's being talked about here, then draw it larger. If the thyroid is actually smaller, then draw the thyroid smaller. But you're going to interpret the information here, and then you're going to draw this correctly. I've drawn both of these. They are both not correct. You can figure that out as you go through this. And then when you finish this part, please do the analysis question. Again, all of the answers to the analysis questions are in the reading that you've done. And you only have to look and you'll find those. All right, we're going to take care of and be done here. So good luck with this. Let me know if you need some help along the way.